Chapter 48 A Psalm, a Psalm of the Sons of Korah Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised in the city of our God, his holy mountain, fair in situation, the joy of the whole earth, even Mount Zion, the uttermost parts of the north, the city of the great king. God in her palaces hath made himself known for a stronghold. For lo, the kings assembled themselves, they came onward together. They saw straight away, they were amazed, they were affrighted, they hasted away. Trembling took hold of them, their pangs, as of a woman in travail. With the east wind you break us the ships of Tarshish. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God establish it forever, Selah. We have thought on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. As is your name, O God, so is your praise unto the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of righteousness. Let Mount Zion be glad, let the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Walk about Zion and, and go round about her, count the towers thereof. Mark you well her ramparts, traverse her palaces, that you may tell it to the generation following. For such is God, our God, forever and ever. He will guide us eternally. All right, let's go back up to verse 1. Once again, this here is a song, a psalm of sons of Korah. And I, like I've said about Korah, Korah means the, they mean, it means the bald, to be bald, to be absent of hair. It is a similarity or something we can compare. It is not necessarily mean that bald people have been stripped of their glory, but it is, that is the representation of it. We're going to pick it up here in verse 2. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised, in the city of our God, his holy mountain. That is the place of God, his holy mountain, that hallowed place that God has set aside where God is exalted, in the city of God. And the city of God, as we're going to see, is Zion, city of God. The city is a place that has a guard, and we're going to find out God is the guard. Three, fair in situation, the joy of the whole earth. Even Mount Zion, the uttermost parts of the north. The city of the great king. Fair in situation, the joy of the whole earth. And it still is today. It is fairly situated. Or it means in a good spot. It is located in a very good spot. Uh, strategically. Even Mount Zion. And the other part, most parts of the north. And this would be where Zion is. Uh, Zion is that parched place. Zion is that place. Uh, it's a marker. It's set there for an example. It's set there uh, so we can see that it, it has fell under the judgment of God before. And we'll find out it keeps coming through. It's in the uttermost parts of the north. And the north is the place of God's judgments. That's the storage house of God's judgments. It's even that city of the great king. That's that place that has a guard of the great king there's only one king who's great and that's god there is no other great kings four god in her palaces hath made himself known for a stronghold and god in her palaces has made himself known uh, for a stronghold this is this is the purpose of it and if we look at it we can see that is a stronghold and as the stronghold of god is five for lo, the kings assembled themselves, and they came on and were together. For lo, uh, did not the kings assemble themselves, and they come together uh, to come against Jerusalem, to come against Zion? Six, they saw straight away, they were amazed, they were frighted, they hasted away. And as soon as they saw it, they were amazed, they were scared to death, we'll find out, they were scared and hasted away, or took off running. Seven, trembling took hold of them there, pangs as his woman in travail. Trembling took hold of them there, pangs as a woman in travail. Just like a woman giving birth, these pangs are fear. These pangs are scared to death. That's what their pangs were, was just pure fear. Uh, God caused the understanding that God is here 
to come upon them and this we'll see is described like an east wind like something blowing across your spirit and God takes hold and we'll see they took off running uh, scared to death eight with the east wind you break us the ships of Tarshish these ships of Tarshish Tarshish is uh, that merchant city that great merchant city and God breaks the ships of it. He destroys it. He destroys their abilities, their commerce. He just this east wind. East is uh, where the sun comes up. It's the way of understanding. It's that enlightenment. The wind is something that blows across time. So this little bit of knowledge that comes across time will find out destroys these things. That's the way God works. Nine. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God established it forever. Selah. And just like we've heard these stories of old, uh, some have got to witness. Lucky ones have got to witness. Uh, we say they're lucky or they lucky. We don't know. We don't know the conditions at the time. But we know there's a lot of strife. There's a lot of trouble. There's a lot of things that lead up to uh, the final moment in the city of our God. This place that has a guard, it's where God dwells. And he's proven himself there. He's established it for a stronghold. And he's established it forever. He's going to show himself great there. Ten. We have thought on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. And our, and our thoughts have been on God there in the temple um, continually, that place where God dwells, the place where God's established his judgment, where he's established his name. Eleven, as is your name, O God, so is your praise unto the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of righteousness. Just like God's name, it's eternal. Uh, just like God being eternal, uh, his praise uh, goes to all the ends of the earth since it's such a small place to God. And his right hand is full of righteousness. His right hand, that's the strength in his work. That's the abilities of his work. It's full of righteousness. It's full of justice. It's full of of goodness see if we stay on that side of it if we stay on that side of goodness if we stay on that side of life see there's no evil there there's no wickedness there it's when we depart when we go out from when we make the wrong choice that creates these things that are adverse to the conditions we desire 12 let Mount Zion be glad let the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Let Mount Zion be glad, that high place, that parched mount, that raised place that was built on the generations before. It's set there for a marker. It's set there for a something whereby we can know. Let the daughters of Judah rejoice. And these daughters of Judah, these... These ones that go forth with the understanding of praisings uh, unto God, let them rejoice because of your judgments. Because of your judgments. God's judgments, these things that are automatic when you got the blessing and you didn't take advantage of it, the judgment was an automatic thing. See, God said, choose life. And when you don't, you get the automatic, the judgment. 13. Walk about Zion and go around about her. Count the towers thereof. Walk about Zion, that parched place, that marker. Look, and if we could, if we could go all around about her and count the towers thereof, we would find out there were many towers. There was just towers every so uh, many feet down the walls, all around the walls, many towers. These towers are places of protection. They are places that are lifted up so they can see out beyond the enemy uh, to, to give an advantage. A watching type place and a place of defense, a place of protection. Many towers 
all around. See, and this would insinuate that it is a highly secure place, highly, highly guardable. 14. Mark you well her ramparts, traverse her palaces, that you may tell it to the generation following. Mark you well, write it down, her ramparts, her entrenchments, her uh, embattlements, these places that are prepared for it. Traverse her palaces, walk around the place, take a look around all the magnificent buildings, all the, all the wonderful things that you may tell it to the generation following, that, that they may know of the same thing and why these things are here and how they got here. And 15, for such is God, our God, forever and ever. He will guide us eternally. For such is God. This is the way God is. He's entrenched. He's prepared. He's ready. He's watching and he is the guard of the city. He is the, he is the embattlements of the city. He is the king, constantly watching over, prepared. And that is the way God is. Always ready to defend us. Always ready to help us, support us. Give us a hand when we need it. And he does guide us eternally if you will follow or observe his understanding, his law, his, his statutes, his commandments. We can call them them. Or we can call them a little words of warning for your own good. Either way you want to look at it. We're going to move forward. Psalms 49. Turn and return.